March 16th, 2024. And we just found two Polistes Fuscatus, it looks like. Northern paper wasps. Probably queens who've been out hibernating. And here they are in the barn window. So we're gonna rescue them and get them out of here so they don't dehydrate. Get them outside where they need to be to start their nests. First we'll capture them. So when you're capturing a wasp on the window, they're naturally attracted to where the light is. So you just gently put your container over them and they'll end up in there most of the time. There she is. So what we have here is a Polistes fuscatus, northern paper wasp. She looks like a young queen, probably fertilized in the fall of last year in 23. And now that it's March 16th of 24, she's getting ready to come out and start a nest. Freshly out of hibernation. Same with this one that we have in here. She was stuck in the window, same way. And so let's go ahead and give them some food and some water and then we'll get them squared away with uh, some lodgings that will keep them safe. Okay, so what we have here is a little honey, absolutely dark buckwheat honey, very tasty stuff. And we have a little water in this container. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow them to eat just a little bit by placing their container over ours. Uh, get them a little food and water and from there uh, once they fuel up a little bit we're going to move them into a couple of outdoor free-range habitats where they are welcome to stay they may or may not stay there but we'll see but first things first they've been stuck in the barn for we don't know how long so they're definitely going to be in need of some food and water so they don't dehydrate okay so we're going to take her container first this little queen we're going to put her right over the honey so she can now explore that and eat whenever she's ready to do that but we won't rush her it's up to her when she wants to eat and same thing with this one uh, she will be put over the water okay, same with this queen here we call them foundresses technically in the paper wasp world once she climbs back up to the top here we go we're going to put her over the water so she can now get a drink when she's ready. So let's let them just relax and fuel up a little bit and then we'll get back with you and we will try to rehouse them. So these are the first two wasps we've seen in 2024. That's always a special occasion for us every season and we try to film whichever is the first wasp we see each year. So these two were found at the exact same time in the same place, stuck inside the barn. It's an old carriage house, and it has windows that, for some reason, seem to attract wasps, so we usually find them in there every year. It was great to see that both of these wasps are beneficial native species that we love to have around. Here she may be realizing there's some food there. Hopefully her antennae will pick up the fact that that's edible honey. Meanwhile, our friend over here is just hanging out grooming. Don't worry, friend, you're in good hands. Pretty soon you'll be free again. In the meantime, why don't you get something to drink? Plastic is not very clear, but you can see her face. Beautiful colors. Felicity's Fuscatus has always got such a pretty kind of orangey, maroon, brown, yellow coloration. So paper wasps, when you capture them, they'll explore the little habitat that you put them in for a while, but they're very calm. They're, they're a very calm insect compared to yellow jackets, which kind of never stop moving. Beautiful wasps, Polistes Fuscatus, Fuscatus Fuscatus, tomato, tomato. Whatever you have to say about that, I don't know. But they are the northern paper wasp. Beautiful native wasp around here. Very important to the local ecosystem as helpful pollinators and very good biological control agents who 
help keep pest insects under control. They reduce the pest insect population by hunting pest insects and feeding them to their own larvae, while the adults mostly feed on nectar and some fluids, a sweet fluid produced by the larvae themselves. So they kind of do a fluid exchange. One gets mostly protein, the other mostly carbohydrates in that dual feeding called trophallaxis. See if we can encourage her to eat a little bit. Right, she just discovered the water. It's so windy today, we have to hold everything down. So we're, we're probably just gonna do the transfer. Uh, we'll let them feed themselves uh, at another time. But for now, we're just gonna try to let them understand that this can be a place to live where they are welcome to stay. So let's try to transfer one of them now. We'll start with this one, so it'll be a little bit easier to do. So if you're gonna do a transfer like this, you just take the top, put it right over the hole. You see, she's starting to get down there and explore a little bit. And that's what we want. We want her to walk right in that hole. Because they're naturally attracted to spaces like that when they are looking for homes in the springtime. So there she is, she just went in. So what we're gonna do is just leave that here. And we're gonna let her relax in there and take it easy and find shelter. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this queen. And they can decide if they wanna be roommates or if they want to be separate from each other and one can move out. transferring here so let her get into this container and then we're going to do the same thing with her. Just going to let her get acclimated here and find her way to that hole naturally. There she goes. Hopefully it won't take long. So here you see that she found the honey that we left for her inside. It's a smear of this buckwheat honey that we just put inside the plastic. And so she's getting a little nourishment in there, which is good. So we're gonna drop some honey sticks into the birdhouse. So it looks like they're willing to eat it. So what we'll do is just drop them into the hole of the birdhouse here. And that way they will have a little snack if they need it. So she's coming down to explore the hole. There she goes. Naturally, they'll be attracted to sheltered spaces. So now that she's aware that it's there, hopefully she'll just return at her own leisure. In the meantime, we'll put in some honey sticks. And our other one is in there now. So she's already comfortable inside there. So here's one of the sticks dipped in honey. And I'm just gonna drop that right into the habitat here. And put it right in here. Right here, the second wasp climbed right into the birdhouse hole, so that made it pretty easy. But unfortunately, we didn't catch it on that camera angle. Let's drop that one right in there. There we go. Just tuck the birdhouse right in over here, underneath the eaves. This area is a spot where historically wasps have been comfortable living. They like to get up under these eaves with their nests. And here you see a honey stick attached to the wall. It kind of dropped down in there. So hopefully that will give her something to eat, either one of them. And maybe it'll attract some others to come in and maybe call this home. Very breezy day today. A good day for wasps to find a place to hunker down. So both our foundresses are comfortable in their new house and hopefully they'll stay with us for the season or at least one of them may. 
And if they don't, that's okay. There's plenty of other places they can go in this area. And we wish them a happy spring. And we'll let you know if there's any update about these wasps. You may recognize this bird from some of our other videos. This is a little dish. That's how we use it anyway. We put honey in there every year and we just see which native wasps show up. And we'll let you know if we get anybody we recognize. Sometimes we get bees, sometimes we get wasps. We usually get a lot of ants too and flies, unfortunately. Mostly black flies out this time of year. It's so early yet, but maybe we'll fill it up and see how we do. So we're just adding a little honey to our dish like we do every year. And we'll let you know which of our native friends show up and which invasive wasps or bees show up. Stay tuned. So here you see we went on scope cam for a little bit so we could get inside the birdhouse and take a look at our two foundress queens. There's the honey stick against the wall. And there's a pile of sticks in there that was evidently brought in by birds in the previous season, but they never did make a nest in there as far as we could tell. But they definitely had deposited a number of sticks. So we were using the scope cam here to look around, see if we could find our two wasps. Fortunately, we found both of them still in there. Looked comfortable, set up at the bottom of the pile of sticks inside the birdhouse, and just hanging out and safe from the wind, from the cool weather. They can hang out in there as long as they like. Hopefully they'll be friends and make a nest together. That does occur sometimes with Polistes wasps. But the Polistes fuscatus typically will start a nest by itself. We usually see the co-foundress thing with some of the invasive Polistes dominula, the European paper wasp. So stay tuned. We'll let you know if these beautiful ladies stick around or not, and if they set up a nest in their little birdhouse. This species is always so great for the local ecosystem. We're always happy to have them here. They're good friends of ours, and we hope they'll be good friends of yours. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.